Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. In 1 Samuel, we find Israel really in a dark place, uh, spiritually speaking. They have wandered from the Lord. If you remember uh, in that last verse at the end of the book of Judges, it says that there was no king in the land and everybody did what was right in their own eyes. They were not walking obedient to the Lord according to his commandments, but they had kind of followed after their own whims and their own desires and had uh, began to be influenced by the nations around them. And so we, we find them very, very simple. And even though there was a few people who were kind of lights in the darkness, uh, such as Hannah and Samuel, for the most part, people were um, living a life very much separated from the Lord. And it's in this context that this battle with the Philistines takes place in chapter 4. The Philistines come up against Israel and they defeat them and, and kill 4,000 of them. And the elders of Israel come together to kind of talk about this defeat. And this is what they say. This is in verse 3 of chapter uh, 4. They say, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Um, they're kind of blaming God. But they're also not taking ownership of the sins that they've committed against the Lord. Nobody ever steps back and says, Hey, you know what? Maybe because we've been transgressing, transgressing the laws of the Lord and been walking after our own ways that the Lord has delivered them in, or has delivered us into their hands. But that doesn't seem to dawn on anybody in this situation. Listen to what they say. This is the conclusion that they reach. Let us take to ourselves from Shiloh the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that it may come among us and deliver us from the power of our enemies. So they're trying to force God into the situation. The Ark of the Covenant was a place in which God dwelled. Um, you find that as you continue to read uh, in the next few verses. It says, So the people sent to Shiloh, and from there they carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who sits above the cherubim. And the cherubim were on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God's presence would be manifested, right there on the Ark. And so by bringing the Ark in, they're, they're trying to bring the Lord into the situation so that God can fix it, can just fix the situation. And if you get into their heads, you, you, you get this idea, if you really think about it, this seems like a very selfish way of dealing with God, right? Uh, we don't want to have anything to do with God, but, you know, we're in this bad spot, so okay, let's get God into it so we can get out of this mess. Um, completely concerned about themselves, not concerned about God's desires, God's heart, what God wants, but just completely focused upon themselves. Well, they end up getting defeated by the Philistines, the ark gets carried away, and they end up defeated before their enemies, all the way up to the time until Samuel actually finally gets them to confess the sins that they had committed and to repent of them. As you continue on in chapter 7, starting in verse 5, it says, Then Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. And they gathered to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted, on that day, that was a, kind of a sign of repentance for what they did. And, and it says that, that they said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And so they brought repentance, they brought confession of sins. Uh, they finally admitted the fact that they had been walking contrary to the Lord's desires. And then as you continue to read, you'll see that they actually do defeat the Philistines af from that point onward. And so they kind of go... Uh, the long way around, but they finally get around to repenting and confessing their sins and having the victory. Now in our lives, we might experience something very similar to this. Uh, maybe we go through a season in our life, either days or weeks or months or years, where our heart really isn't dedicated to the Lord. Uh, we are doing just enough to keep on God's good side. Maybe we go to church every once in a while, Maybe we say our prayers before our meals, but that's about the only time we pray. Uh, and we live as though we're thousands of miles away from the Lord. And we really don't give Him any time, any energy, any thought. But then a hard time comes. We get into a dire situation. And then all of a sudden we want to force God into the situation. Now we want the Lord to help us. And, and now we want God to fix things. Even though we didn't care about Him or be too concerned about Him. Uh, all the times before. And and you can kind of sense what how or think about how 
uh, what a selfish attitude that is. I don't want to have anything to do with the Lord until I need Him for something. And then let me bring Him in. Um, we're thinking of God like some magical trinket that we can have and, and we, we rub it or we wave it and, and it can fix the situation and then once the situation is fixed we put it away and never to be seen until the next problem comes. Uh, a really, really bad way, really bad approach to our relationship with God. And, and how can we expect the Lord to help us if we've been living so distant uh, from Him? We should be living for the Lord wholeheartedly all the time. We should be dedicated to Him all the time. We should be uh, committed to obeying Him, to learning what His will is for our lives, following after that will, uh, wholly uh, given to the Lord. Um, and, it, and then, if, from that standpoint, if a, a problem arises, we can with confidence come before the Lord and speak the problems to Him and know that He hears us and, and know that He'll at least consider uh, fixing the situation. But as you're listening to this, you might be thinking, well, is it too late for me? Um, you know, I kind of have been living that life that was just described. I've been kind of uh, wandering away from the Lord. And yet I'm in a, a bad situation. I'm in a dire situation. Is there any hope for me? Uh, because I've been sinning, you know, I can't really do anything about that now. But does that is that going to keep me from getting any help from the Lord in the situation that I'm in? Uh, well, I would give you the same advice that Samuel gave Israel. If you want the Lord's help, the starting place is to confess your sins to the Lord and repent of the things that you have done. Repent of uh, walking so far away from the Lord. Repent of the sins that you've committed. And, and the guarantee is, is that the Lord will uh, forgive you in that situation. Uh, one of the most comforting passages of scriptures is found in 1 John chapter 1. Where John wrote, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, maybe we're like the Israelites in the situation in 1 Samuel where when they were first defeated by the Philistines, it didn't even cross their mind that they had sinned or that they had transgressed the law of the Lord. Um, they were just looking for a quick fix. And, and, and in our lives, we have to recognize the fact that we have sinned. Uh, because he says in verse 9, if, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we come before him saying, Lord, we have sinned. Confession means to agree with. And so what we do is we come to the Lord agreeing with him that we have sinned, recognizing the sin in our lives. Uh, we, we turn away from those sins. We repent. Uh, we say, Lord, we don't want to walk that way anymore. We want to walk wholeheartedly with you and to turn our faces back to him. And then, from that standpoint, we can then come before Him and bring our problems and bring the situation before Him. And it might be that the Lord will do for us exactly what He did for the Israelites in our story. That after they confessed, He delivered them. And, and the Lord uh, might very well deliver you from your situation. But you got to start out by conf with confession and repentance, returning back to the Lord in that way. So these are just some things to think about today. Hopefully they've been helpful, helpful to you. I do thank you for watching the video. I love you guys. Hope you have a great day. God bless.